Video games have always been one of the toughest mediums to adapt to another format, since more often than not they strip away all of the elements that made it work in the first place, and because of that it's rare to see it ever done right. And while nowadays we have some truly fantastic video game adaptions with the likes of the very kid-friendly Castlevania, or the ever-popular Pokemon anime which will still be going long after the apocalypse, back in the 80s it seemed like they make a cartoon out of literally anything as long as it would sell something. Rambo. What the fuck? Regardless of whether it was originally even aimed at kids or not. Combat time! Hmm, almost like dumbing down a mature property for children isn't a good idea. Who would have thought? Today we're going to be looking at some of the weirdest and worst old cartoons based on video games, because I hate myself and so do all of you. There's just no better place to start than the absolute abomination that is the 1997 Donkey Kong Country cartoon, which opted to replicate the cutting edge visuals of the game with some truly stellar animation. All of the budget went into DK's ass cheeks and no one can tell me otherwise. But believe me, the visuals aren't the only issue to be had here. I mean, for one, listen to DK's voice for even a second. Banana! The entire show was motion captured, which explains why the movements look so... off. I don't want to hear anyone talking about Beast Wars not aging well. I Take a look at this. Although I'm not even sure if this would have been considered good at the time. The basic plot has Donkey Kong serving as the protector of the legendary Crystal Coconut, which has the ability to grant any wish, making it the target of King K. Rool and his reptile minions, who all have gargantuan nipples for some godforsaken reason. Many of the Kongs from the games made regular appearances, including Diddy Kong, Cranky Kong, Dixie Kong, and Candy Kong, which you can see gradually look less and less like how they're supposed to, as well as an original character named Bluster Kong, which has to be the worst thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Here I go, creeping, shh, don't make a sound. And they made 40 episodes of this. How? How is that even possible? Is there something you should tell me, big buddy? Oh, and did I also mention it's a musical? Two songs an episode, in fact. Which means 80 songs in total, dear God! I'd shower you with coconut cream pies. There's there's a rap battle between K. Rool and DK at one point. Hold it now, hold it now, hold it, hold it right there. You wouldn't drop, couldn't drop, you wouldn't dare. I'm a reasonable, raving, derangeable despot. I'll tell you what, we'll trade like a stock exchange. Wheel and deal, how's that feel? It's a steal. Diddy for the coconut, the coconut for Diddy. <laughs> How is this real? Every time I watch a clip of the show, I'm still trying to convince myself that I'm not having a stress-induced nightmare. I'm Candy Kong's comedy, look like we're one and the same. Ah, I don't want to look at it. It's disgusting. An absolute zero. I'm nobody's hero. This show speaks for itself, really. There's not much else I can say about it. So I won't. Captain N the Game Master. Now here's a show that on paper sounds absolutely incredible. Some kid named Kevin who does nothing but sit inside playing video games all day gets sucked into his TV and is transported to Video Land. Ah! A place populated by game characters galore from various popular NES titles. There he's told he has to become the prophesized Captain N and team up with Simon Belmont, Mega Man and Kid Icarus in order to stop the evil forces of Mother Brain. That sounds awesome. So what the hell happened? Not a single one of the characters in Captain N looks even remotely like their game counterpart. It's actually a challenge to try and identify who the actual fuck this is meant to be. Mega Man, you fought bravely and well. A pleasure to serve you, your worship. <laughs> what? Mega Man, what did they do to you? So yes, this thing is Mega Man. That is Simon Belmont and uh, I will never in my life understand the logic of, hey, this design is really successful and everyone loves and recognizes it. Let's completely redo it. I mean, I can understand the sake of wanting the show to have a unique look, but I mean, what the hell is that? Oh my god, what do they do to Mother Brain? It won't be long before I, beautiful goddess that I am, become queen of any old man. <laughs> Samus isn't even in the show. Why did they do this? In the second season, a literal floating Game Boy named... Game Boy joins the main team, and if that's not the most subtle advertisement in the world, then I don't know what is. Recurring villains included the Eggplant Wizard from Kid Icarus, Dr. Wily from Mega Man, the 
Count from Castlevania, I think, and King Hippo from- Oh, dear God, again with the nipple! <laughs> Link, Zelda, and Ganon would also show up straight out of their appearance from the Legend of Zelda cartoon, looking oddly normal for this show. I just can't stand here and watch. Uh, no, Kevin. Link knows what he's doing. Ah! Other game characters included Mega Girl, not oh. Roll, Mega Girl, and Dr. Right. Captain N doesn't give a shit about your rules. It does whatever it goddamn wants. What should be the ultimate Avengers Endgame crossover of video game cartoons is just this really odd mesh of characters that only sort of resemble Nintendo games, which by all means still has its charms, but ultimately is just a little disappointing in the direction it decided to take. Mainly because I still can't get over the fact that someone decided that Mega Man should sound like that. That's my home. We've got to warp their mega fast. Do not speak. Ever. I love that the only reason he chooses to stay in video land is because he hates his mom so much. You better not be playing that foolish game. And don't forget to take out the trash. On second thought, I guess I could stay just a little while longer. The one thing you might notice is strangely absent is any form of Mario content. Though that was intentionally done as I didn't want to take attention away from the dedicated Mario Bros cartoon which was also airing at the time. Which is probably for the best because he most likely would have been barely recognizable. Also, Kevin is a hilariously goofy protagonist. <laughs> Me restore freedom to video land? Hey, I don't even have my driver's license yet. Speaking of the Legend of Zelda cartoon, Here's the Legend of Zelda cartoon. Since the plot of the games carries over reasonably well to animated form, it's more or less the same basic premise, just extremely dumbed down. With Link and Zelda having to protect the two pieces of the Triforce from the evil clutches of Ganon, a funny pig man. <laughs> But of course, the real reason anyone remembers this show is for Link's iconic catchphrase. Excuse me, princess. Well, excuse me, princess. Excuse me, princess. There are only 13 episodes of this series, and he says it 29 times. Well, excuse This is why Link will never speak again. He's doing us a favor, really. Excuse me, princess. <laughs> it is beyond concerning how creepy Link is in this series, though. Zelda! Link! Oh boy, smooching time! I don't know what it was about the 80s and just having the most obnoxious and unlikable protagonist, but this is definitely not how I've always pictured Link would act. <gasps> Looking good, princess! Especially from this angle. Look at him, he's a freaking creep. <laughs> I like how in the games there was an intentional decision to avoid giving Link a distinctive voice, you know, outside of. <laughs> and so this show was like, fuck that, make him as smug as humanly possible. Excuse me, princess. In terms of being faithful to the games, this is actually one of the better ones, with only minor changes here and there, like rupees being called rubies and the bows firing lasers for whatever reason. Can't get a clear Okay, that was friggin' awesome. I don't know who the hell came up with the action sequences in this show, but some of these are absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I know at first glance this one looks really silly and Link is kind of a narcissistic asshole, but I still think this one is pretty great. You know, especially because of- Well, excuse me. The Super Mario Bros. Super Show. Now this is one I actually grew up with and I will forever love it for that. In this, Mario and Luigi are plumbers from Brooklyn for some reason, who along with Princess Toadstool and Toad face off against King Cooper. I love Mario and Luigi's dynamic in the show. For once giving these usually silent characters boisterous personalities actually came out really well. Don't worry, Princess. Luigi and me will climb that mountain before you could say spaghetti and meatballs. I can! I'm allergic to mountains! Boy, do I wish I could say the same thing about Bowser. I want my feet lit! <laughs> this show also finally answers the age-old debate of whether Toad is wearing a hat or if that's just his head. Because in this, he can just tear it off whenever he wants. I very much like their interpretation of how to make the Mushroom Kingdom work in a cartoon format. A lot of enemies, power-ups, and levels are worked into the episodes, though as the show went on and they exhausted their ideas from the source material, they just centered the plot around random shit like Hercules or Jack and the Beanstalk, with Mario and Luigi thrown in there somewhere. Along with the animated adventure, each episode was accompanied by a live-action segment starring wrestling superstar Lou Albano and Danny Wells as Mario and Luigi, who are trapped in an inescapable hell along with a laugh track whenever they do anything. By the way, <laughs> a little piece of spaghetti on 
your overalls. Thank you, Luigi. And you have a little bit of spaghetti sauce on your shirt. <laughs> and your socks don't match. <laughs> They also frequently had celebrity guest appearances, but I'm pretty sure I'm not old enough to recognize any of them. Hi, are you the Mario Brothers? Sure are. Oh, you're Nicole Leggett. We watch your show all the time. Mario and I are your biggest fans. I have no idea who you are. <laughs> and yes, in case you're wondering, this is the show where this masterpiece comes from. Do the Mario swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go. Do the Mario. Take one step, and then again, let's do the Mario! Come on now, just like that! Dick! Super Show was succeeded by two more cartoons, The Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3, because fuck two, I guess, and Super Mario World. Mama Luigi! Both of which are automatically inferior because they don't have do the Mario. The popularity of the Monster of the Week formula that seemingly every 80s and 90s cartoon loved using couldn't have translated better to a video game property than Mega Man, which has so many robot masters that the show could still be going to this day. Holy shit. And that is more or less exactly what they did, just with a few minor changes. Whoa, where are you going? With you. Not a chance, Fancy Pants. I don't need any girl robots getting in my way. Now I'll have more time to concentrate on being a <coughs> robo-hero. No offense, Roll, but I think you better stick to your housework. Ah, uh, good thing Dr. Light made sure to program sexism into his robots. Where are you going? Much like Mario and Zelda before it, Mega Man is loosely based off the games, just with Rock himself being infinitely more infuriating. I'm running out of power. I'm... I'm... <laughs> And hey, this one is already an improvement considering I can actually recognize him this time. Ah. He's fucking jacked in the show though, look at him. Self-lubricating ball joints. If you ask me, I'd say this is definitely the best one out of all of them in this video. I got the most enjoyment out of it for sure. Mega Man does the better job of feeling like the video game brought to life, although it's sorely lacking in the part where you die 500 times to the same boss before giving up and quitting. The perfect fit! Mind if I borrow this? Oh, now you got my weapon. Oh my god, he just fucking killed it! I think my favorite part of the show is how much of a colossal dumbass Mega Man is at times. Now I've got your power! They also had Mega Man X show up as a separate character from the future in one of the final few episodes, who was just Mega Man but even more jacked. Oh no! He's gonna blast President Lincoln! risk yourself for Mr. Lincoln. Such a shame that they've never attempted to make a new Mega Man cartoon. I think it could really work if it was done right and if they don't turn it into a freaking slapstick comedy series. Hmm, wouldn't that be nice? <clears throat> they made the battles and mother will be back. Out of the plentiful Sonic cartoons that have come out across the years, the one that has always been an outlier for me is Sonic Underground. Sonic Sad AM and Adventures? Yeah, sure. Sonic X? Hell yeah. Sonic Boom even, I can understand. But what? Why? A Sonic musical show where he's in a band with instruments as weapons? What? Underground says fuck you to any previously established Sonic lore and just makes up its own shit. Sonic now has two siblings, Manic and Sonia, both of which look like they were ripped straight off of DeviantArt and are part of a royal hedgehog family that had to be separated from their mother after Robotnik took over Mobius. The trio then go on a 40 episode long quest to find their mother armed with magical medallions that turn into instruments and force us to listen to a god awful song every episode. Every single one of which looks like it was edited in Windows Movie Maker. Take away our medallions, take Though featuring a generally darker premise, with Robotnik having already won, Underground still makes use of that classic 90s silliness, and... Okay, this is awful. The only pre-existing Sonic characters are the Blue Blur himself, Robotnik of course, and Knuckles, not even Tails, with everyone else being entirely original, and boy can you tell. Underground had one hell of a production schedule though. They had to crank out two episodes a week, which while I don't know anything about how animation works, sounds insane. And to back that up, the writers once claimed they weren't given enough time to write a cohesive story, which does explain a few things. The songs for each episode were even made before the storyboards were finished. Boss, please, we don't have enough time. Gotta go fast! 
<laughs> Underground ended on a cliffhanger that was never resolved just as Knuckles showed up. So that's great. Guess that Val meant jack shit, eh? Back when they still had the license for Sonic, Archie Comics had planned on releasing an epilogue to finally wrap up the series, but that never eventuated and now... well... yeah. But Underground shall always live on in our hearts, but mainly just to make fun of how funny the smear frames look. <laughs> and that's about all for this time round, which means that it's time for... Today we're gonna open two letters and a box, and I cannot wait. Dear Diamond Ball, this may be crazy on how it's me again, but to be honest, I cannot stop watching your channel. It makes me happy. Anyway, here are some questions I wanted to ask you since the beginning. What are your thoughts on the Transformers Studio Series Devastator? I could not care less, except for the fact that they gave it the enemy scrotum. Have you heard of the new Transformers War for Cybertron Netflix series? Yes, I'm sure it'll come out one day. If you were Michael Bay, how would you direct the five Transformers movies? Are you implying that perfection could be changed? Have you been to New South Wales? Nope. Do you know the Coffin Dance? Yes, it's so good. Even if it's even if it's like outdated now, I don't care, I love it. Have you heard of Space Jam? Come on and say it! Do you have a TikTok? <laughs> No, absolutely not. I don't hate myself that much. Can you do a review on the B movie, not the Bumblebee Transformers one? I think I actually, honestly, I've been considering like either that or the Emoji movie. I don't know. From Jethro. Hi, Diamond Bolt. My name is Thaddeus, Thaddeus, but most people call me Thad. That it is. I am a 12 year old that loves video games. I have been watching your videos for a long time now. My first video on your channel I saw was Weird Australian Cartoons. It was really funny and I subscribed. When I was looking around my sketchbook, I found a Sonic drawing. I'm giving it to you. Keep up the good work and stay safe. Sincerely, Thad. Oh, thanks, dude. And here is our Sonic drawing. That is great, and I love it. And last but not least, the box. <laughs> it's been so long. And Hi, I've realized I've never explained what these two things are. Well, these are pieces of a game I've made called Capsule Chess. Simply take the top part of the capsule. I don't remember if I told you my name, but it's Finn. Underneath the capsules are a model of you and kind of George. He looks more like Epic Minecraft Steve. Isn't he already? Anyway, Adam Senpai, you are the best waifu, and Sonic suggests is the best Sonic game along with Sonky. Oh, that's cute. I like Marie there. <laughs> God, drawing a tail Sonic Knuckles. <laughs> I'm so immature. <laughs> and here we have the Lord of D card. Top 10 <laughs> spookiest thing in Sonic. God, this is gonna haunt me till I die. Dear Diamond Bolt, this is my first rule letter. I guess I was meant to read this one first, so my bad. I'm writing during the great toilet paper crisis of 2020, although by the time you're reading this, it will probably be 220. I live in the UK, which sucks because that means I've never met you in person, but I'm sure it's better than living in Australia with living death traps. You're right about that. I've been watching since top 10 scariest things in Sonic. I was scared for life after watching it. Me too, but for different reasons. But now I have some questions. Will you ever make a video on Yu-Gi-Oh? Uh, I've never been into it, unfortunately, sorry. Will you ever make a Splatoon playthrough on BS? I'm, I'm sure there's a Splatoon 3. Who is your true waifu, Marie or Aqua? It's like asking me to pick between my children. I, I love them both equally. What do you think of Gravity Falls? Oh, I absolutely love it. It's so good. Why don't you have more subs? I think I have too many subs actually, but thank you. Thank you, dude. All right, let's check out these capsules. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Oh my God, I love these. Thank you, dude. Thank you so much. I'll open more mail next time. I have so much more to get through. So sorry about taking this long. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. See ya.